You know, sometimes I'll be scrolling Instagram and I'll see a beer bicep reel and then the top comment on that reel will always be bro should hesitate. And while that's funny and it gets a lot of likes, I think beer bicep is really successful because he does not hesitate. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, you are probably not very successful because you are hesitating way too much. Right? There's a right amount of hesitation and I think everyone errs on the side of being, of just hesitating way too much. Let me give you an example, right? A real life practical example. So we've been hiring for mid-level roles in EOS, which means we've been hiring people who can manage teams, who can manage channels, who can manage entire projects. And it's just a nightmare, especially today versus, you know, the last time I ran a services company, which was six, seven years ago. It's totally different. I'll explain. So when we get on a call with, say, someone, and we think that person is good, Eventually, after maybe 15-20 minutes, the call often turns into the person starting to ask the interviewer what they should do with their life. It's like, hey, should I continue doing mechanical engineering or this particular job or should I move to content? And at the end of the call, it's never like, this is what I want to do. It's always like, oh, I have to go back and think, do I want to quit my job, my current career and come here and do this? Which is the strangest way to approach an interview. And I'll tell you one thing, these aren't isolated instances. Across Rohit, Shreya and me, over the last maybe couple of weeks, we've done something like 150 interviews over the call. I've been taking it on the go. And it's just the same thing over and over again. And here's the thing. It's not like you are choosing between an established company that you're currently working at and some dungeon, right? Or some one or two man startup. We are now kind of established. We work with everyone from Intel to NVIDIA to Qualcomm to Google to Zerodha. We do a lot of work for many of these companies. And even small things like relocation, we actually have teams to help you with. So it's not like you're deciding between, you know, Two companies where the other companies are an extreme risk for you. You're still being paid at par or above par. We pay at or above market rate. But if you are confused about whether you even want the career, I'm sorry, but you're not going to do very well because that will show in the interviewer. And the interviewer is going to be like, why are you wasting my time if you're not sure if you want to do this? And here's the thing, right? This is the opposite of going to five different companies and getting the best offer. That's good. That's due diligence and you should do it. And that's the reason we pay slightly above market, right? Because we don't want to lose you to other content companies. But if you're not even sure you should have been in the interview and you're doing the interview and we can tell it's a waste of time in the first five minutes, but you're still talking about, you're putting the burden of your life in decisions on somebody else. That's weird because if you're doing it here, you're probably doing it at other companies and that's not very good for you and your reputation. Now, this is very different from what it was six, seven years ago. And I can only blame this optionality mindset created by social media. Social media today tells you you can have this and this and this and this. Life is choices. Life is choices. When you make one choice, you necessarily shut the door on the other one. And all this, by the way, started with dating. If you see the entire concept of situationships, right? It's exactly the same thing. It's like, okay, there's this person that I would like to settle down with, but maybe there's somebody better. And I'll tell you a very interesting story a friend of mine from college told me. He told me that finding a partner, finding a life partner is like walking through a garden of roses. And this garden has a rule, okay? You can pick up any rose you want, but once you pick up a rose, you cannot pick up any other roses, right? And you walk, you start walking through the garden and you see a rose and there's a nice rose. You think, okay, maybe I should pick this up. And then you see a slightly bigger rose, some, you know, two, 10 steps away. So like, let me not pick this up. So you walk 10 steps ahead and you see that rose. And you're about to pick it up. You're like, this is a pretty big, beautiful rose. And then from the corner of your eyes, you see another beautiful rose. You see another bigger rose. You're like, what if I had that? And then you walk there and then you realize maybe there's another big rose. Right? And you don't know whether a bigger rose or a smaller rose is going to be there in the future. And the thing is, the moral of the story is just pick any rose and then become comfortable with it. The minute you start comparing your life, the rose you have with the other roses, you are just setting yourself up for disappointment. And this is the exact same thing we see when we convince somebody to come join us and they are confused. And we've done some of this. Right? We've, we've actually put in some effort to get some people who we think were very, very good but confused. The minute they come into the office, and they work with us for a couple of weeks, done. They're happy with what they do. The comparison goes away. The environment here, the people here, they sort of learn to gel with. All the ambiguity of, oh, I'm moving to a new city or I'm moving to a new workplace, all that goes away and then they are comfortable. So it was a lot more about anxiety of the unknown of what is this going to be like versus, you know, this comfortable thing that I already have. And that is what's holding you back. But the minute you actually get in the job or you get the rose and you actually spend a little time with it, then you realize comparison is the thief of joy. But I don't know if that's a cognitive bias. I don't know if it's just confirmation bias. You've already made the decision to join the company. Is that why you're happier? Nobody knows. But the truth is you have to make a decision. And you might ask me, Varun, well, how much time do people stay confused for? And we've seen them stay confused for six months, a year, a year and a half. 
that's precious time in your life where you could just make a decision any decision and 2 years later you could always make a different decision right jeff bezos has this great article about some decisions in life are irreversible and other decisions are reversible which is you take them and then later on you realize i made a bad decision let's say you joined us and you didn't like it and you think it's a bad decision you can always leave a few months later a few years later and go to another place right similarly and vice versa if you are doing your current job and you leave it and you think that's a bad decision you can always go back right and if you're good at what you do reasonably good at what you do you can go back and this thing not just applies to careers but it applies to life you don't have to have ultimate clarity you just need to commit to something anything and committing gives you clarity because at least you know whether you did the right thing or the wrong thing take content for example right content really only blew up the industry only really blew up after geo kicked in but the dynamics were always there google and facebook became giant like they became juggernauts because of their advertising business and content creators and content in general is very much like the advertising business which is why money flows in both places and from a rational perspective it makes sense but because it's a new industry and not enough people know too much about it there is hesitation so that's the thing like all things that are new which are shiny they have pitfalls it's not all like you know um, unicorns and rainbows there are like pitfalls and there are also good things but you'll never know unless you commit you'll always be in that mindset of is it bad is it good oh i don't know and then you don't end up making a decision that's the worst part you don't end up making a decision i want to end with a story from one of my favorite games sekiro so it's this game where it's basically like a rhythm game where a lot of people find it hard but after some point of playing it you learn the game and you learn exactly when you attack and when you defend when you deflect so it's a medley of using the attack button and the deflect button and you deflect twice sound changes you start attacking and then they start attacking and it's like a rhythm game that you play and after a while you master it and when you master it you feel good life is sort of the same thing either you attack or you defend either you join that job or you don't either you date that girl or guy or you don't but you have to make a decision in sekiro if you decide not to attack or defend you're going to get slaughtered right so you have to make that choice and i'm going to leave you with one line where when you face the final boss and i died to him maybe 60 70 times right before i got the complete hang of it now i won't even take a single point of damage from that boss because i know all his moves and i know exactly when to attack exactly when to defend but i'll tell you a line he keeps saying every time you die and that line is hesitation is defeat and that's the title of the video so make sure that it's okay to be confused but don't let that sort of prevent you from committing Now if you stayed till this point in the video I actually have a very urgent hiring call which is if you are somebody that can manage channels if you are somebody that can manage people if you are somebody that can manage projects as a company we now need that layer of mid level management we now need that layer of people who can manage entire projects be responsible for outcomes and if you have 3 4 5, 5 years of experience doing this in content in other places whether it be in advertising or not that's fine even if you worked at a services firm where you're delivering tech projects that's useful to us because we hire some of that as well and we work with everyone from like i said from google to the bangalore police so it is a good opportunity but we want you to be sure and not just us but most other companies can't keep doing calls where you're not sure whether you even want this career in the first place so you just need to come in with a little bit of that clarity and we don't want to oversell you on oh this is this thing because there are pitfalls and there are good parts in both things right but you need to be sure so if you are sure that you are somebody that can do this we pay above market all you have to do is type bit.ly slash i am very sure so if you are very sure click that link apply and if you are any good you will get a call from us and i hope to see you working with us at some point in the future that's it for me bye